Hallelujah. We're going to start a new series tonight. Praise God. We didn't exhaust the series Redeemed. We just put it on the shelf for now. If you like titles, I do. <laughs> this, one, this one's entitled Power and Authority. Praise God and... We really need to pay close attention to this one because we really need this power and authority in the world we live in. If you would, turn to John 8 and put a marker there. John 8. And then go to our key verses for this series, which will be Luke 9. A marker in John 8. And go to Luke 9, verse 1 and 2. It says, Then he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach or proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It said that Jesus gave His disciples power and authority. The word power here is the Greek word deutimus. Deutimus defined is God's miracle work in power. It's the ability, strength, and might of His Spirit. The word authority here in the Greek, is exousia. Exousia defined is God's delegated authority. It's the right to exercise His authority. Back to the verse, Then He called His twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And He sent them to preach, to proclaim the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. Who did God give His power and authority to? To His disciples, yes. They were given power and authority, now listen to this, over all demons, to cure diseases. I wonder when the... The world's going to find the cure for cancer. We got it. The cure for AIDS. The cure for all the flu strains, a.k.a. COVID. We got the cure. He gave them the power to cure. We got the cure if you're a disciple. And to proclaim the kingdom, God's kingdom, and heal the sick. God sent the disciples out that way back then. And God sends the people out the same way now. But many believers, they don't live this way. You're not seeing much of that happening. And you wonder, why is that? Because it takes more than just being a believer. It takes being a disciple. There's many believers out there. And you'll see no power come from them. But when you run into a disciple, the disciple is going to be exercising his God-given power and authority. Jump over to John 8. John 8, verse 31 and 32, it says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed on Him, If you continue in My Word, that word continue there, continue means to abide, to live, to remain. Uh, NIV says, hold to My teaching. If you continue in My Word, and back up again, If I'm abiding, if I'm remaining, you know what continue is to me? If I'm identifying. That's what that is as well. 
If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You're not a disciple just because you believe. You're a disciple because you continue in His Word. Disciple also means follower of Christ. Are you following Christ? That's continuing in His Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. John 1.1 If you're following Christ, you're following the Word. You're doing the Word. You're continuing. You're abiding right there. Remember, He's the vine, you're the branch. I can't go anywhere in the Bible and not see identity. But a disciple is one that continues in the Word. You can be a believer and not a disciple. A believer that is not a disciple is only a convert. And there's millions of converts going to heaven. But they're not disciples down here. They're not doing what God sent them to the world to do, to be a witness. You've got to be a disciple to be a witness. Amen? A believer, a convert, he has salvation for later. Are you sure? I'm positive on that. I know how much God loves people. You can be the most confused, backwards Christian that never darkened the door of a church, but if you confess Jesus Lord, you're going to be there. Amen. He don't want you going to hell. He just wants a little bit of your will aimed toward Him and He'll take you. Thief on the cross. He looked at Jesus and said, Will you remember me when you come into the, your kingdom? He said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't darken the door. He wasn't a good witness. <laughs> Praise God. God has got a bad rap. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I think 1 John 4, 8 and 1 John 4, 16 says He's love. You can't have a bad rap if you're love. Uh, there are going to be people in heaven that uh, most people would have bet money they wouldn't be there. And the reason why they bet money they wouldn't be in there because they would have said down here, oh, I know how that boy lived. Well, that shows you how ignorant and confused you are and don't know nothing about the Word. So you're telling me your self-righteousness getting you there? Okay. <laughs> That's religion right there. That's religion. Now, if you turn your heart toward God, confess Jesus as Lord, you're there for eternity. Glory be to God. A believer that's not a disciple is only a convert. He has salvation later, but he doesn't experience any of the salvation now. Like I've said in the past, he'll live hell on earth and squeak into heaven. Uh, We don't want that program. Praise God. A believer that is a disciple, he has salvation for later, and he also experiences it now. We live heaven on earth, and then we're ushered in. Praise God. Verse 32 again, it said, And then... You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word know here in the Greek means to know by personal experience. I like that. God's not against your seeing things and feeling things. That word, the Greek for that word know is personally experiencing it personally experiencing the truth, the freedom of the truth. Oh, that's good. If you're a disciple, then you will live by His Word and personally experience the freedom of it. Listen to this, these two verses in the message. It says, Then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in Him. If you stick with this, living out 
what I tell you? You are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourself the truth. And the truth will free you. He's, he has never been against experience. He just wants us to go the right way to get there. You start in faith, you'll get to the feelings. You'll start in the believing, and then you'll get to the seeing. Let's just do it His way, amen? If you're a disciple, then God has given you His power and authority to live by if you're a disciple. Well, I hadn't seen much of that. Well, you've got to decide. <laughs> Are you going to be a disciple? Are you continuing in the Word? Are you going after Him? What is first and foremost in your life? And, you know, you can break it down. Whether it's family, whether it's career, whether it's hobbies, whether it's money, none of that can be first if you're a disciple. Jesus Christ has to be first. That's why, you know, my career is a big thing. Well, I understand. But uh, a witness for Jesus and putting Him first is bigger. Jesus gave you that career so you could be a witness at that place of business. We have to see it that way. It makes working a whole lot more exciting. Y'all know I deliver car parts. See, just saying that wasn't exciting. <laughs> I'm not even a car guy. I deliver car parts. But it is exciting. Why? Because I put God first in all of it. I had another conversation yesterday with a guy about being baptized in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Well, if I wasn't in the car business, I wouldn't have had that conversation. How did that happen? I'm expecting it to happen. Well, I never get those opportunities. Are you expecting it? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance of things expected. And the evidence of things not seen. Expect it. Give some substance to that faith and faith will give substance to what you expected. And all of a sudden, this, the door will open up. I didn't plan it. For that matter, he started the conversation. Don't start a God conversation with me. I'm all in. <laughs> Praise God. If you're a disciple, then God has given you His power and authority to live by. But you must release it to activate it. How do you do that? By letting God's Word be spoken from your mouth. Letting God use your mouth. Psalms 1720 says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. How's he doing that now? Through your mouth. God's mouth is your mouth. You have to see that that way. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says we're the body of Christ and members individually. This body has a mouth. It's yours and the body's Christ. You're Christ's body. For that matter, Christ owns your body and your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. He didn't give you that body to do what you want with it and say what you decide to say. Well, I, I, just, I just like to speak my mind. Shut up. <laughs> Find out what God says first, amen? amen. Was that a little too hard? <laughs> I don't want to be around anybody that said, well, I just speak my mind. That yeah. Was, that's what yeah. we to do. <laughs> just speak my mind. I say it how I see it. I won't know you long. Trust me. There's no faith in you at all. You are just run on sight and feelings. You're a dangerous individual if you're just running on sight and feelings and emotions. Anything can happen. And a lot of it can be really bad. 
He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He uses us now to speak through. Praise God. That should excite you. I want him to speak through me. I want to see what the disciples saw. What did they see? They cast out demons. They cured diseases. They proclaimed the kingdom of God and healed the sick. That didn't stop when the last disciple died back then. We're the body of Christ. We're more of the body of Christ than the disciples were when he told them that. When Jesus was on the planet, he was introducing the new covenant. He didn't teach the old covenant. He was introducing the new covenant. And he was teaching people faith. that It just, it just was way beyond them. He said to the Father, I'll finish the work you sent me to do. That's before he got on the cross. He was pulling them out of that old covenant to the better covenant. He was the middle ground. Let's, let's go over here to the, to the better covenant. Better blessings. Stronger glory. Hallelujah. Man, that'd be a whole message right there. He wants us to cast out all demons. He wants us to cure diseases. He wants us to proclaim the kingdom at hand. It's right here, right now. And heal the sick as we go. It didn't say qualify them. It said heal them. The best thing to do (laughs) is stay in your lane. You be the body of Christ and let God be God. And you say to whoever's before you what God tells you to say. Don't qualify them. You'll go religious every time. Ain't no way you're going to get healed. I know what you did last week. That's qualifying. That's religion. I'm not religious, but the devil will put that in your head to stop your faith. He wants to work through us. As disciples, He's given us His power and authority. But it's up to us to release His power and authority. It's up to us to command the work of the enemy to be destroyed. Because you know, it says in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, He might destroy the works of of the devil. Then John 19.30, Jesus said it is finished. What was finished? Redemption was paid for. He paid for our sins and brought about redemption and destroyed all the works of the devil on the cross 2,000 years ago. And now we're living in such a time as this to be his hands, his feet, and his voice, and to speak his word to enforce what he did 2,000 years ago. When the devil comes against you and he's trying to sell you on one of his works, one of his attacks, you let him know. Jesus took it out 2,000 years ago, and I'm not taking it either. But see, you won't even think that way if you're just a believer. You, you got your fire insurance paid up. And when you die, you're headed off to glory land. And you're not going to think that kind of stuff. We train disciples in here. We've been training disciples ever since the church has been around. We're going to take the kingdom by force. We're going to command what God has already done on the cross and expect to see it and feel it because Jesus shed his blood for us to get it. Amen. But you won't think that way if you're not a 
disciple. Praise the Lord. Most believers, they're not disciples. You know any of them? (laughs) They don't do the word. And they don't see much of signs and wonders and miracles. They're not thinking about casting out demons. They don't even think about God instilled in me the cure for cancer, for AIDS, name it, go down the list. He's instilled in you the cure for COVID. Me? Yeah, if you want to be a disciple. That's all I want to be. I think there's not too many years left in this world. I think the power of God, the authority of God is cranking up. Yes, it does. And he's looking for his disciples. And I call reality church his disciples. That's who we are. So be prepared for the power to be released in the authority he's given you. Praise God. A believer, just being a believer, they're always waiting on God to release His power. But God is always waiting on them to release His power. You see that, don't you? A believer is always waiting on God to release His power. It was released 2,000 years ago. God is waiting on the believer to release God's power. The believer keeps talking to God about the problem when they should be talking to the problem about God. A believer is always talking to God about the problem when they should be talking to the problem about God. Speaking the word over that problem, that's talking to the problem about God. God wants the believer to speak to the problem and shut it down through the power and authority of His Word. So you're saying that I have this power and authority. I've already been gifted with that. If you're a disciple, there's qualifications. Now at this church, we're disciples. The power will flow through you in the authority He's given you. But you do have to believe that. And you do have to expect it. If you would, turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. We're turning to quite a few verses tonight. Matthew 16, verse 19. Jesus said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus said, if you bind it on earth, it will be bound in heaven. So this is how you look at it. What's bound up there? Sickness, disease, lack, poverty. All the bad stuff. It cannot get into heaven. So you can bind it down here. And whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. What's loose up there? Health, mm-hmm. prosperity, peace, joy. Oh, yeah, that's good. Everything good. We'll loose it down here. Amen? Amen. Why aren't I seeing it? Because you're not loosening it. <laughs> to bind is a command. To stop something, to shut something down, to forbid something, to rebuke something. That's what the word bind is. To loose is a command to activate something, to cause something to flow, to allow something, to release something. You need to start using these words. What what am I releasing? Everything in heaven. What am I shutting down? Anything that's not in heaven. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. (laughs) To bind or loose is to believe what God says 
over what the circumstance says. Have you noticed circumstance talks? They're loud too. Have you noticed pain has a strong voice? It's time to bind and loose, no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance you're in. Quit qualifying it. If it doesn't fit in heaven, don't take it. If it's in heaven, take it. Praise God. When we speak God's Word, His power and authority flows, and it shuts down the problem and activates the answer. But you've got to speak God's Word for His power and authority to flow to shut down the problem and activate the answer. We have the same spirit of faith as the saints of old. We believe, therefore we speak. 2 Corinthians 4.13 Romans 10.6 says the righteousness of faith speaks. What does he speak? 10.8 says he speaks the word of faith. The Bible is the word of faith. What do you get when you speak the word of faith? Romans 10.10 With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's confessions made unto heaven now. Hallelujah. If you would, turn to Luke chapter 4. This story is about Jesus going to see Simon Peter. Luke 4, verse 38 and verse 39. It says, Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother, or mother-in-law, was sick with a high fever. And they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Jesus spoke to a fever, and the fever obeyed him and left. Did you see that? Jesus is speaking to a fever. Can a fever hear? (laughs) Apparently it can, because it left. He told the fever to take a hike. Fever left. Sickness went with it. Well, I don't see talking to a sickness. That's why you're always sick. (laughs) You talk sickness all the time. I get the flu every year. It's like every year you call it fourth. Mm -hmm. Flu. Come get on me. (laughs) That's what you're doing. But then when... Wild and crazy preachers like me say to speak directly to that that sickness. Oh, we don't do stuff like that. I know. That's why you. That's why you always sick. I'm not taking the mess. If it attacks me, I attack back. What if it puts you down for a bit? I'm fighting all the way. I know my rights. It's not right. For the righteous to be cursed. I think we said that for the last three months. That's my right. I'm standing up for my right. I'm standing up for my my spiritual rights as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And bless God, I'm standing up for my constitutional rights as an American. Period. I don't care how you want to jerk the law around and send out your own lying propaganda. I'm going by the Constitution. You know why the 
illegitimate administration hasn't controlled America yet because of our Second Amendment rights. I saw a statistic the other day. The reason why they're just not pushing communism down our throat is there are 400 million guns in this country. And you can't find them all. Leave us alone. You know, we're at the stage now that they're picking on the people that just want to be left alone. And you won't leave them alone. You don't want to mess with those folks. And I'm not talking to... (laughs) They're out in the hills, he said. They might not be Christians. And when their relatives die, they dig the hole and bury them. They're good at that. I've had these conversations with folks. (laughs) Thank you for that amen, Lois. Didn't mean to choke you up. (laughs) They're good at that. Now, we Christians, we're not doing that. You can be scared of us because we got a secret weapon called praying in spirit. But you need to be scared of them because they got a shovel. They're good at it. They know where to put you. Okay, moving right along. I keep hitting the note with Lois for some reason. Oh, man. You started it, too. <laughs> you did. My mind wasn't on that one bit, but you started it. <laughs> Jesus spoke to a fever. Well, if a fever can hear, that means cancers can hear. That means COVID can hear. Whatever strain of the flu that's hitting you, it'll hear. When you're a disciple, you know your power and authority in Christ. You need to talk to these works of the devil. Get rid of them. You have God's power and authority to do that. Praise God. And He's waiting on us to do that. He's waiting on us to exercise His power and authority so He can perform His Word. Jeremiah 1, 12 in the Amplified, God says, I am alert and active, watching over my Word to perform it. God is alert and actively watching for His Word to be spoken so He can perform it. Why isn't He performing it? Are you speaking it? Are you telling this sickness to get off your body? Are you telling this pain to get out of your body? Isaiah 53, 4, Surely is bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Hebrew for there is surely is bore our disease and carried our pain. If Jesus took your pain, you don't have to take it. I'm not going to take it. Sometimes it goes just like that. And sometimes I fight all day. You get to this point that you know that you know that you know deep down in your knower, you don't have to have this pain. You get fed up with it. Spitting mad about it. You get violent. You command it to leave and it says, I'm not leaving. Yes, you are. You go to bed that night, wake up tomorrow morning, and the pain brought another buddy pain with them. I don't like buddy pain. So what do I do, Chris? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on unending life that Jesus already shed His blood to give you for this life down here. I don't think there's any pain in eternal life. 
And quit qualifying things. Get rid of the pain and then you can ask God, is there something I need to do? Is there something I need to change? You tell me. And He will. He's a, changed my life completely and pertaining to diet, my intake of things, He's always changing that. Well, I, I don't know if I like that. When you get to the point of being a disciple, you'll be alright with it. I'll take that how you want it. Well, I heard how you eat, Brother Chris. I couldn't stand that. I didn't say eat the way I eat. Eat the way God tells you to eat. Well, I don't want to give up this and that and the other thing. Did God tell you to? I've had people tell me that, you know, we shouldn't be drinking coffee. It's bad for you. And you really shouldn't put that in your system. God didn't tell me that. I am not giving up my coffee. If you want to discuss it, I'll meet you at the coffee shop. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) I've been drinking coffee all my life. It fits my metabolism. It really works in all parts of my system. And if you're not supposed to drink it, don't. But on the other end... I'm not going to go down to the uh, get-together and eat a funnel cake. Oh, but it's so good. Not in my body. Are you against funnel cakes? No. (laughs) Eat it if you're all right with it. I'm not all right with it. It won't be in my body. People go, go so sideways on all this stuff. Just do what God tells you to do. Amen? And leave my coffee alone. I'm not quitting it. That's all it is to it. Amen? Oh. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Jesus is speaking in verse 7 and verse 8. He says, As you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's at hand? This water bottle's at hand. That means the kingdom of heaven's really close, isn't it? (laughs) It's not this don't have anything to do with the sweet by and by. Yes, that's the kingdom of heaven. But he wants it down here. For that matter, Luke seventeen twenty one says, The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven's within you. We're teaching you how to release it right now. You're a carrier of the kingdom of heaven. Luke 17, 21, I believe it is. It's not in my notes. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. Now, people that have a problem with True identity in Christ. Christ is in you. You're in Christ. You crucify with Christ. Nevertheless, you live, yet it's not you, but Christ lives in you. People that have a problem with that, they say, well, you know, you've got to ask God to heal the sick. No, He told you to heal the sick. Didn't He tell you to do it? Well, I can't do it. Now, I know you don't know how to identify. Of course, I can't do it. But I'm not in Chris. I'm in Christ. And when Jesus said that to us, He wanted us to identify with Him and let Him do it through us. Because you're the body of Christ. These are His hands. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mark 16, 18, I believe it is. Are you looking at your hands and thinking, wow, I got something special about my hands? They're not. (laughs) They're not. They're just human hands that have no power in it. But when you identify with Christ, amen, now they're Christ's hands. That's the difference. Cleanse the lepers or cleanse the cancerous. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you've received. Freely give. It started as you go, preach saying. Preach saying means proclaim Commanding. 
The word saying there is commanding. We have God's commanding authority to release His power. If you're a disciple. You have God's commanding authority to release His power. Now He wants us to release His power by speaking His word, commanding the sickness to be shut down, and the healing to be released. He wants us to command the cancer stopped and the healing to flow. Do you see how this works? Raise the dead physically, raise the dead spiritually. I talk a lot about spiritual dead raising because there are a lot of people out there, the dead is walking around out there. They need Jesus. Use your commanding authority and release His power. Give God the opportunity to perform His Word in people's lives. Don't get into fear. Don't ever get into, oh, what should I say? I don't know what to say. Just roll with it. You'll find out it'll come right out of your mouth, won't it? Amazing how that works. When do we do this? Look at the end of those two verses. It says, freely you received. When the time is right, at the new moon, when you qualified them and you, you believe they can receive now. <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> freely you've received, freely give. But what if I pray for them and they don't get healed? What if they do? Amen. Can we just go out there that way? Why not? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's so comforting to realize you're not God. <laughs> Thank you for that, amen. Let Him be God. Amen. <laughs> we need to know the scope or the reach of our God-given authority and exercise it. And I got one verse for you that, that gives you the scope or gives you the reach. Jesus said this in John 10, 10. He said, The thief has come to steal, to kill, to destroy. He said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly so what is the reach of our power and authority if it's stealing killing or destroying we need to shut that down by commanding it to stop in Jesus name that's your responsibility and then God's going to take the words you just said and Jeremiah 1.12 said, He will perform it. It's His words. If it's stealing, killing, or destroying. Kind of like the illegitimate administration. It's stealing, killing, and destroying. Shut it down. Amen. Command it, shut down. In Jesus' name. Well, we're supposed to pray for people in authority. They're not in authority. Illegitimate Joe is not the president. Are you hearing me? He's not the president. He's the only president elected by voter fraud. (laughs) And you're praying for him to make better decisions? Get rid of them. Why are you getting so dogged? Because we have the power to do it. Praise the Lord. If it's abundant life, which is prosperity, health, and peace, release that by commanding it to flow in Jesus' name. Oh, that's so good. 
we got this power and authority. But we get discouraged because we speak it and we don't instantly see a change. That's why 1 Timothy 6.12 said, Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight, family. I can tell you that the dictatorship will be out of the office in the true administration, the true president that won, will be back in there. Amen. Amen. I know that for a fact. Guarantee it. Why are you so sure? Because this country went after God when it was created. God's not letting go of us. And the devil's not going to get this country. You say, well, I hope he don't get the country back. He never had it. He never had it. And he's not getting it. So stand your ground. What are you moved by? Are you moved by chapter and verse? Are you moved by what the news is saying? I don't care how conservative and righteous the news is. Don't let it move you. Just let it move you to release your power and authority, commanding things shut down or commanding things released. Amen? In Luke 10, 19... Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. The word behold right there means to look, to see, to be aware of. Be aware of what? That we have God's power and authority to tread on the enemy and shut down all his attacks. In your personal life, in your family's life, in your church's life, in your town's life, in your nation's life. And right now, in the world's life. Shut it down. Ezekiel 22.30, God looked for one man to save a nation. Disciples, wake up to the power and authority you have. Amen? Amen? And continue to fight. Praise God. This is a good word. I done preached myself happy. That's good stuff. (laughs) Don't give the enemy any place. 4.27. Ephesians 4.27. Don't give the enemy any place. How do you get place? You gave it to him. I don't like this church. I'm not ever coming back. (laughs) Because you hurt my feelings. You'll make it to heaven, believer. But you'll never have heaven down here until you be a disciple. You need to suck it up, get your feelings off your shoulders, and realize you're a soldier in God's army. We're in the fight of our life right before Jesus comes back. We really don't care about your feelings. And you need to care about your faith over your feelings. Praise the Lord. (laughs) That's pretty strong, Pastor Chris. Last pastor I had, you know, I'd go to him. He would would sympathize with me and tell me, oh, you know, I know how it feels. I had it too. And and Aunt Susie had it too. And Uncle Jim had it. Oh, we we just know how bad it. Do you really need that? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Uncle Jim died that he had it, so we really feel bad for you too. Then you leave there and you're thinking, man, I feel even worse. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome to sympathy. Yeah. How about going to your pastor and he gives you the word and jerks the slack out of you, Amen. lines you up and you leave feeling healthy and healed. Amen. When the attack comes your way, you attack back and say, you're not happening here. Amen. I know who I am in Christ. And I resist you in Jesus' name. When you do this, the devil and his works will flee. Amen. James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Well, when the devil's gone, his work's gone. Amen? What if he doesn't? 
The devil has no choice in the matter. Why do you say that? Because God said so. Is, is that good enough? Because God said so. Hallelujah. James 1.12 in the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible, God said, I watch over my word to accomplish it. But some word has to be spoken so he can accomplish it. As you release God's power and authority by speaking his word, God says he will accomplish what you say. If you were a believer in the house tonight, go the step deeper and be a disciple. Amen. Amen. And ask yourself that. If I say it to myself, I say, Norman, am I just a believer today or are you a disciple? I'm a disciple. I'm continuing on. I'm abiding. I'm remaining. I'm holding tightly to God's Word. And when you believe you're there, you will experience the power and authority that comes with that position. Y'all get anything out of that tonight? Amen. Amen. Amen.